Good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday. Hope you are having a good week so far. Um, for <clears throat> the rest of this week, um, first of all, just a couple of things. The drawing contest winners, I will um, share a slide with you on um, tomorrow, just to let you know a few people were still working on those. Um, do check that all of your work has been turned in for e-learning so that I can give you the most credit. Um, we remember we we don't take away from your grade, but we can add to it. So just make sure that you've done everything and I will keep going back and checking old assignments and giving credit. And then in PowerSchool, I'm marking it as turned in or um, missing um, if you want to check that as well. So next Thursday is going to be our last day um, and then you are free for the summer. Um, all artwork will be kept for you for in the fall. Um, there really isn't an easy way, especially with construction for pickup, but I will keep everything um, in the fall and I'll have a couple of announcements. And then um, as we get into like October, if you still haven't picked things up, then I'll have to um, recycle or find new homes for it. Um, but I will give you, I will keep all that. If you are in eighth grade or if you are in honors, then um, I will give you directions or send out information next week for picking up your artwork, especially the clay, um, so that you're able to pick that up. I'm sorry we didn't get to paint it, but at least you'll have that after all that hard work. Um, but I'll give you more information if you're in eighth grade or honors next week. Okay. All right. And this dude's pressing all kinds of buttons. Okay. So value um, lights and darks um, help give the illusion of um, certain surfaces or images or depth. And um, if you are skilled at looking at it and adding it to your drawings, it can help improve them. So for today, I have a couple of things. So one, um, we're gonna do a five part value scale and I talked about that the other day. So you're basically just gonna draw a small, um, longer rectangle divided into five parts and you're going to shade it to include all five values. Keep in mind that the white of the paper is gonna be your lightest value and then the black, as dark as you can get it with the pencil you're using, is going to be your darkest value. And then the grays in between. And then we're going to do a little um, activity with layered lines. So basically, you're creating a box with five layered lines and you're shading to show where the shadows are. And I'll ex explain that in a minute. And then you have a choice. So I've included four or five choices. You can choose one of those options if you want to do more. Great. But you, you need to do at least one option. So the layered lines is basically taking almost like strips of paper or ribbon and making it seem like they're layered on the surface. So this example has blended shading, colored pencil, and then stippling and stippling is shading with dots. You can try any or all of those um, options. So <clears throat> step one, I want you to create a five part value scale. So visually you have this to work from for all of the options. So this value scale that I did is really just um, maybe like this long. So it's not very long, long enough to see the values, but not so long that you're shading forever. So you have the white of the paper. Then I always shade my darkest one next. So I have my lights and dark. So I shaded this dark. And if you'll notice, my marks go the direction of the shape. So the overall shape is horizontal. So that's the direction that my marks go. So this is my very darkest value that I could get with the number two pencil. Then I always skip to the middle and kind of visualize what the middle would be between one and five. And then I go back and adjust the grays in between. So you should have white, light gray, medium gray, dark gray, and then black, as dark as you can get it with the pencil you're using. And then in a smaller box, uh, this doesn't have to be huge. You want you don't want it so small that we can't really tell your drawing or you don't have room to shade. Um, but again, the box that I drew is probably about like this. Um, and you're gonna draw five strips or five ribbons that overlap and go in and under each other. If they are going under, then you are you're, make it seem that way. So I went through and I just skipped where I wanted it to go under as I drew them. You do not have to arrange your lines this way, you can, um, but you, that's up to you. Then you're gonna go back and where the, um, the strips of paper are overlapping each other, you're gonna add shading. So darkest shading and then blending out. Now in this one, I didn't blend out very much, but here I did because this one is three layers down. So kind of thinking how far below the surface is the strip of paper to kind of make it seem more believable. This one is not going underneath any, so this is completely white. And this one is all the way, this is the furthest layer away if you look at all of these. So I shaded more of this to show that it is further from the light source. And you want it nice and dark um, next to that and you're blending out. So again, our marks follow the edge of the shape. So it seems believable. If you would like to, you can add some sort of pattern, shading, texture, color in the background if you'd like, but that's up to you. 
Okay, so those are the two things you're gonna start with. Then you have options for the last one. And these are all small little sketches you can do on one sheet of paper if you want, or if you mess up and you need more than one sheet, that's fine. Um, you're gonna choose one of these. Now, if you are in honors art next year, so some of you sixth graders, you are you already were accepted into honors art, you know that, um, or some of the seventh grade, you are joining us in honors art or my seventh grade honors art. If you are in honors art next year, I want you to choose either option two or five, please. Everyone else, you can choose one through five, um, but I would like honors to choose one of those. So option one are stacked cups, basically. Um, and for that, you're just following these examples. So here's one way of interpreting interpreting it. Here's another. Um, I think this one is a little bit easier to follow. This one, they kind of twist. So if you decide to do this option, check this out at the bottom. It just kind of goes step by step. Create some sort of image with these stacked cups, um, whatever you would like. Um, I included one example, um, the resource I got this from, um, almost like this weird trumpet shape. It kind of reminds me of, of an elephant trunk. Um, whatever you want to do with the stacked cups, after you have it drawn out, you're going to add value to make it seem more 3D. So really, really dark where those little gaps are shaded. And then the highlights, kind of like we did the other day with those um, those strips that we, were high, that we were shading to make it seem more 3D. Okay, so be sure you include white highlights, different grays, and then black for your shading. It'll make it more believable. Option two is swirls. Now, this one's a little bit more complicated. Um, if you kind of follow these basic starting points to get the swirled shape, and then if you go back and you add the shading, it'll make it it'll make more sense. So these are some examples on the bottom where they've even added texture and shading with that. So those of you that are um, already skilled at just basic shading, this would be a great thing to try um, and kind of challenge yourself. How can you make it seem like it is wrapping and swirling around? If you notice the shading is heavier on one side because of the light source, and then there's just little bits on the opposite side to make it seem like there are those indents. Uh, your next option, option three, is to do a stone wall. And this is, now you do not have to create the, the stones or the um, boulders exactly this way. This is just a way to get you started. Um, you're going to divide it up kind of uneven um, and then divide the shapes up randomly. So if it's a stone wall, the, you're kind of fitting in pieces um, versus a brick wall where they're all the same. Rounding edges, kind of creating that mortar. Again, you can use um, you can use colored pencils for this if you want. This one has hatching lines instead of shading if you like, and this has blended kind of together. So you can decide on that. The next one is the thumbprint swirl. So again, you're just following these directions. Now this example does not have um, a ton of shading. So I'm gonna rely on you to add a little bit more to make it believable. And then um, to make this ring around the outside seam 3D, if you're shading on the edges and leaving a highlight, it will make it seem three-dimensional as well. And with any of these, you are welcome to work in colored pencil if you'd like, or you can just stay with graphite. And then the last option is the crystal drawing. Um, I encourage most of you to try this, especially if you um, want to work on blended shading. So you're drawing a crystal, and a crystal has faces. So these flat edges are the faces. And by shading each one differently, you can make it kind of seem 3D. So these are just some examples. You can draw your own. You can look up other examples. This is just to get you started. Um, if this one seems too complicated, this cylinder right here or here would be good choices. Um, so you only have to draw one. After you have it drawn out, you're gonna take each of those flat surfaces and add a different value. So on these, even though these are computer generated, you can see that that's a very light gray, a medium gray, a dark gray, and even darker, and it will make the pieces seem 3D. Then if you go back and erase white highlights or leave white highlights as you are shading, it'll make it seem even more um, crystal-like and reflective. And again, colored pencil or um, shading for this if you'd like. If you use colored pencil, you wanna make sure you're blending well so it doesn't look scratchy. Another shading option for the crystals is to shade um, a range of values within each face of the crystal. So picking a corner, shading and blending up or down in different directions. Um, this is gonna work better if you draw a more complex crystal. If it's really simple, you may wanna go with the other one. But even on this, this is just on line paper, an example I found. So picking an edge or a corner and shading and blending out in different directions just to kind of make it seem more 3D. Okay, so 
five part value scale, just start with that so that you have a range of values visually to be using. Then um, create your box with the layered lines. And then you're going to choose one of the options to do. You do not have to do all five. If you want to try them out, great. If And show me what you did. Um, but you're going to choose one of those. Then at the end, you're just going to turn in um, a photo of your work. If that means you did two different papers and you have to turn in two photos, great. Um, please make sure your photo is in focus and that it actually loads. Some of you continue to um, turn in an assignment or you hit submit, but there is nothing there for me to grade. And I keep commenting back. Um, just because you hit turn in doesn't mean you get credit for something if there's nothing there for me to grade. But please go back and kind of check that. Um, so far, most of you are doing that. There's just a few people that continue to submit and there's nothing there. All right. So all your value drawings for the whole week are due on Friday. Um, tomorrow, like I said, I will post the drawing contest winners. And um, I hope you have fun with this. I will see you um, next week.